Hi, how are you? In this opportunity I want to introduce you to the Wondershare Mockup tool. To create very elegant user interfaces, easily and quickly. Mockup allows you to capture your creativity in a more efficient and simple way. This great design tool is pretty much all in one for you as a software developer. As you can create prototypes, design, flowcharts and mind maps. You can try Mockup in its PRO version for 5 days, then continue with the free plan. For example, I'll create a new prototype project. You can choose a certain size or create a custom one, or you can also edit any of these pre-designed templates, whether an application website or other user interface components. The Mockup interface is very easy to understand and use, since it is very similar to Photoshop and CoreDraw. However, it has more specific functions for the development of application user interfaces. So it turns out to be much more advantageous and easy to work with. Just drag shapes, text images, pre-designed templates and change the colors, position and size at will. You can also stack the layers to create a more personalized appearance. Also, the part one like the most is that Mockit allows you to work as a team, with your collaborators on a single project and to be able to review the project versions. In many cases this is crucial for team development. Well, in this tutorial we will create a custom combo box, with a very elegant, flat, modern appearance and keeping all the basic and important functionality of a traditional combo box. For example, the drop-down list style allows the drop-down list to be opened by clicking anywhere in the control, and the list can be filtered according to the alphanumeric that is pressed. On the other hand, the normal drop-down style only allows opening the drop-down list from the icon, and being able to write freely on the control, as if it were a text box. This is very useful for an advanced filter, autocomplete and suggesting some items of the list according to the written word. Doing so will be a bit more complicated than previous custom controls, not because it is difficult, but because it takes a little more time to re-implement all the essential functionalities of a traditional combo box. So, let's start with the tutorial. As usual, we will add a new item. We can add a user control or we can just add a class and inherit from the user control class and create the custom combo box using code only. We import the Windows Forms library to use the Windows controls, the drawing library, and the component model library to set the attributes. Next, we inherit from the user control class from the Windows Forms library. We will declare fields for the appearance and assign their default values. For example, back color, icon color, back and text drop down color, border color and size. Now, we will declare the necessary components that will mack up the custom combo box, obviously a traditional combo box, is needed to expose its properties and display the drop-down list. A label to display the text, finally a button for the icon and thus open the drop-down list. It is also necessary to declare event fields, mainly create the default event of the custom control, in this case, re-implement the default event of the combo box. To know what the default event of a control is, we can go to the definition of the class and display the class header. In this case, the default event for the combo box is the selected index changed event. So, we can simply copy it and paste it into the header of our class. They can change the name, no problem. However, it is recommended to change the name since in many cases the event already exists in the user control, and they cannot have the same name. Well, let's declare the field of the default event, it must be the same written as it is set in the attribute. In the constructor, we initialize the components of the user control.
in the combo box component, that is the drop down list. We set the background color, a font size and text color. Now, it is necessary to subscribe the default event of the combo box and thus be able to attach the default event that we created earlier. We generate the event method. Basically, this is the default event of our control. You also need to subscribe the text changed event to update the control's text. This event method will take care of updating the text of the custom control every time the text of the combo box changes. OK, now we will initialize the appearance properties of the icon button. The button must be docked to the right side, have a flat style with no border. Set the background color, a size of 30, and optionally change the cursor. Regarding events, we will subscribe the button click event to open the combo box drop down list, and the paint event to draw the down arrow icon with the specified color. OK, now in the text component, we set the dock property to fill. Here basically the button docks to the right side of the user control and the label is filled or docked in the remaining space. Therefore, the label is the face or surface of the user control. Well, let's continue. As I mentioned earlier, the label is either the face or the surface, as it fills the entire user control. So, we can name the method surface click. This event method will take care of selecting the combo box. Finally, in the user control, we add the previous components. It is very important to maintain this order, as the controls are added from the bottom up. That is, the combo box is first added to the background behind everything, then the button is added to the right side, and finally the label is added to fill the remaining space. OK, we set the minimum size, size and text color. In the padding property, we assign the value of the border size field. This time, the padding property is responsible for setting the border size, in the same way, the background color of the user control is responsible for assigning the border color. We resume the layout. And finally we will invoke a method to adjust the dimensions of the combo box. So, 
the width of the combo box will be equal to the width of the label. And it will be located in the lower right part of the user control. All right, now let's start implementing the event methods. When the label is clicked, that is to say on the control surface, we will select the combo box. And if the combo box drop down style is list, it will open the drop down list. As in a traditional combo box with the drop down list style, clicking anywhere in the control displays the drop down list. Now when the icon button is clicked, in the same way, we will open the drop down list, and as a precaution, we must also select the combo box. When the text of the combo box changes, we must refresh the text. That is, the text of the label must be the same as the text of the combo box. Now when the selected index of the combo box changes we need to invoke the default event created earlier in the user control. Remember that this is the default event for both. So, we simply attach the default event of our custom combo box, in the subscribed event method to the default event of the traditional combo box. We must also update the text when the selection index changes. Alright, this is all for the actions of the user control components. I will reorder and group these methods to have them well cleaned and ordered and thus understand better. Well, I'm done sorting and grouping the methods. Now it is time to draw the combo box icon on the button. As usual, we declare the necessary fields to make the drawing. In this case, to find the width of the icon, the height of the icon, a rectangle to determine the limits and dimensions, this must be centered on the button, and finally a graphics object. Okay, now let's start drawing the down arrow icon. Using the using statement, we create a graphics path object to create the icon shape, and a pen object for the icon stroke. We set the smoothing mode of the graph. In the graphics path, we add a line starting at the initial axis of the rectangle to the lower midpoint of the rectangle. We add a second line, starting at the end point of the previous line to the upper right. Finally, we draw the created path. Alright, that's it for now. With this we should already have the custom appearance of the combo box, we build the project to generate and save the control changes. Everything is correct. The components of the user control are in their respective places, the size and border color is applied correctly, like the icon, it is drawn correctly on the button with a specified color. However, we still need to expose the fields and properties and thus be able to change the appearance colors of the custom combo box.
So we go back to the user control code and create the get or set accessors for each of these fields. Here I made a small mistake. The back color field of the list is not being used. That's because in here I was wrong to set the back color of the combo box. Okay, so we select all the fields, right click, we select quick actions and refactorings. And we select encapsulate fields, this to create the get and set accessors or properties of the fields. The back color property ends in 1, because the property already exists in the base class. Then we can override the property or just hide it. In this case we will hide the property to create a new property with the name back color without affecting the base class. Well, when setting the background color, we need to change the background color of the label and button, since these are the face of the user control. In the icon color property, we invoke the buttons and validate method to redraw the icon with the specified color. In the list back color property, we change the background color of the combo box component. In the same way in the list text color property, we change the text color of the combo box component. Now in the border color property. Here very important, as I mentioned earlier in the constructor. The back color property of the user control acts as the border, as the button and label fill the control. So we just copy and paste in the border color property. It is very important that you point to the base or inherited class. Since the back color property of this class is responsible for changing the back color of the button and label. It is the same with the border color property, the padding property takes care of setting the border size, as the button and label fill the control. The padding and back color property of the class go hand in hand to set the border color and size of our custom combo box. Alright, let's continue. We override the for color property to also change the text color of the label. in the same way for the font property. It is optional to also change the drop-down list font, since many times we want to keep a default size, or change it independently from another new property, as was done with the background color of the drop-down list. We create a new property for the text, since in this case it is also not favorable to override the text property of the user control. But if you want, you can do it. However, when adding the control to the form it will be created with the class name in the text of the label. Finally we create a property to change the drop-down style for the combo box. Here I will add a condition for the value to be different from the simple style. Since this style does not present an icon, neither does the way to open the drop-down list, and I do not know if that style is used. Well, if you want to use the simple style you can remove the condition. Well, we build the project to save the changes. And here are the properties, now we can customize the combo box in our own way. Here something happens, when changing border size, inner combo box is not positioned correctly in user control. Well, here I forgot to call the method, adjust combo box dimensions.
Now yes, the combo box is positioned correctly. However, if the border is larger than the dimensions of the combo box and the user control, then the combo box will stick out at the top. This simply increases the height of the user control. Well, it's all great. Now only the data properties are missing to be able to establish the objects and the list, or to be able to establish a data source, or to establish auto completion, or select the item or index from the list. So, we create these necessary properties, but first I will group these properties in a single category and thus have orderly and easy to find. Alright, let's start creating the properties related to the combo box data. To find out what these properties are, add a traditional combo box to the form and review their properties and functionalities. Or we can just go to the class definition and see all the properties and read the comments. These are all the properties, methods and events of the traditional combo box, so, we can pin this tab to the side, and extract the essential properties. For example, the most important property, is the items property, since it allows adding the items to the list. Then we display the comments, and copy the property along with the attributes set for that property. We can remove these two attributes as it is not relevant in this case. Here it marks an error because it cannot find the object. That's because this object collection class is proper to the combo box class, so we just specify the owner. Okay, that's the basics. Then we must implement the accessors. In this case it only has the get accessor. So, we simply return the combo box items property. We do the same for the other properties. The other important property of a combo box is the data source property, since this property allows you to set a data source to the list. In the same way as the previous one, we display the comments, and copy the property together with the attributes. The autocomplete properties are also important for the combo box functionality. So, we copy all three. The drop-down style property has already been created in the appearance properties, so it is not necessary. Finally, there are the selection properties, which allows you to obtain or set the item or index. Well, that's it. If you want you can recreate any property or event. Alright, I'll remove the comments and attributes or keywords that aren't needed.
Okay, and that was it, we built the project to save the changes. I will set the list of objects in the auto-complete mode. works correctly. Auto-complete mode works fine too. It is worth mentioning that the auto-complete and write only the control only works when the drop-down style is drop-down. To understand better, I will add another combo box with list type drop-down style. List type drop down style allows you to open the list by clicking on any part of the control. It also already has a basic filter when pressing an alphanumeric key, and it does not allow you to type on the control. You can check that in a traditional combo box. Now I will test the default event we created earlier. Subscription to a default event is created by double clicking on the control, which in this case works correctly. Now I will test if the event is executed correctly, for this I will show a message box. Great, so far no problem. Now we will give the final touches. We still need to attach some basic events. In this case attach the events of the label with the events of the user control. As I already said, the label fills most of the user control, it is the face or surface of the control, so most of the events happen on the label. For example, the click event, mouse enter, and mouse leave. You can keep attaching the events you need. Here forget to attach the most important event which is the click event. Ok, finally we will override the on resize event method, to adjust the appropriate dimensions of the combo box each time the user control resizes. Alright, that has been all in this tutorial, I hope you liked it, see you next video. Goodbye.